Thank you very much, Mary Ann. Um, and thank you to the CPBO and the CPBO Advisory Board for recognizing us and the Hamden County Bar Association Legal Clinic. And with me, I have Ariel Klemmer, who is the director of the clinic, who joined in January of this year and has uh, done a tremendous job for us to date. Marianne gave a, a good description of the challenges we have uh, in Hamden County and in, and in Springfield, Mass. in particular, which, which has been our headquarters for almost 200 years now. Um, because the community is made up uh, in the, the legal field largely of solo and small practices, um, we, there's really no strong big law presence, and thus there's a profound disparity between the need for and the availability of civil legal services. Well, community legal aid does a lot of great things to address the needs of the low-income individuals in our community. Significant gaps remain due to resource constraints and limitations on whom it can represent, notably undocumented immigrants. As a result of all this, and for other reasons, meaningful access to justice in our community requires the private bar to provide robust and effective pro bono services. That's why we've been so committed to pro bono work at Mass Mutual. Our pro bono committee offers and administers a number of pro bono um, opportunities like have been described tonight. We participate in the PEAR project and do Know Your Rights trainings, Project Citizenship. We do a summer legal institute um, for local high school students, sort of a, a one week law school boot camp. Um, and we also recently started a veterans discharge upgrade cases. And we are proud of the participation that, that Marianne kindly referred to, but uh, in 2017 we donated, our lawyers and paralegals donated over a thousand hours of service and we expect that number to grow this year. But the core of our pro bono program has been and will continue to be our partnership with the Hamden County Legal Clinic. Our program began in 2007 with volunteering at the clinic's Housing Court Lawyer for the Day program, where Mass Mutual lawyers and other professionals helped represent indigent tenants and sometimes landlords on so called and self explanatory eviction day at Housing Court. Over the years, our partnership has expanded, and by 2011, we were donating not only hours but also money to support a part time administrative coordinator. While the clinic grew and began to support a number of programs, it did so on a shoestring budget and with no full-time staff. So in 2017, hoping to see an even wider reach and meaningful impact, we provided a grant to fund a new full-time senior level pro bono director position to elevate and expand the scope of our joint pro bono efforts. We undertook a national search and in January of this year, Ariel, a Bronx Defenders alumna, join the clinic. <laughs> Ariel hit the ground running fast and in a very short time has done an amazing job to help further our pro bono partnership. First, she secured another grant from our law department to pilot an afternoon session of the Housing Court Eviction Day Clinic. For the past five years, due to legal aid's resource constraints, the Housing Court Clinic was run only in the mornings even though eviction day ran all day. I know you'll all be shocked to learn that sophisticated landlords, I, I'll say sophisticated, I think some others on my team would say unscrupulous, quick, quickly learned that they could obtain better outcomes if they moved their cases to the afternoon session. We learned from Ariel that when it was announced in housing court that the clinic was being extended to all day, one of the repeat landlord lawyers actually put his head in his hands and shook his head. Sometimes it's small things like that that let you know you're actually making a difference. <laughs> so the pilot began last month and already we've had a number of real success stories. On the first afternoon session, a volunteer helped a woman I'll call Vanessa. Vanessa is disabled, lives off her and her family's minimal SSDI benefits. She cares for several other family members, including a 95-year-old wheelchair-bound elder with dementia. Her mother's benefits had been withheld for a few months, and as a result, she owed over $1,500 in rent. Before speaking with the Hamden County volunteer, 
Vanessa was led to believe she had to move out in a few months with no plan B. The clinic volunteer asked her about the conditions in her apartment and learned that she had a squirrel and mouse infestation, roaches, a broken front door, heroin needles in the hallway where there was also no working lights. The volunteer met with the landlord's attorney who eventually agreed to dismiss the judgment, which is important because it prevents the blacklisting of, of Vanessa for future stigma when applying for new housing, waive all back rent, preserve the tenancy and repair the conditions. The volunteer also gave Vanessa information on how to call co code enforcement if the conditions persist in the future. Another volunteer on that same day represented Wendy S. I won't go through her story because the factual backdrop is very similar to Vanessa and the outcome was, was, light, uh, was similarly favorable. But I point out Wendy because she was an undocumented immigrant who had fled violence uh, like others we've heard about tonight in, in Honduras. As such, she would not have been eligible for assistance from legal aid. But we were able to help her in our program and keep her and her family safely housed and with a significant credit for back rent due to the deplorable conditions. That was just one day, and those are just a couple of examples of what the Hamden County Legal Clinic and Mass Mutual Partnership is all about. But I would add that Ariel isn't just focused on the housing court. She's also worked with Mass Mutual lawyers to develop a number of things, including a consumer debt initiative. As is typical with communities with poverty rates like ours, the number of people facing collection actions is extremely high in Hamden County. The amounts at issue are generally pretty small, but the consequences of an adverse judgment can be severe. Yet many consumers do not know where to turn for help. Some fall prey to predatory lenders, so-called credit repair companies, and other helpers who end up doing more harm than good. On top of this, the number of consumers who simply don't show up to the court hearing is staggering. The default rate is in the neighborhood of 75 to 95 percent. And of those who do appear, only a tiny fraction are represented by an attorney. So Ariel studied this program extensively, networked with, with other clinics, and developed a multifaceted initiative that will provide pro bono representation in small claims court, train local private bar attorneys to do the same, engage in outreach efforts to reduce high default rates, and provide education on financial literacy on topics such as debt prevention and debtor's rights. We were very, very pleased to learn a few weeks ago that our Mass Mutual Foundation approved the clinic's grant and the Consumer Debt Initiative will launch later this year. Our hope is that this program can serve as a model for other smaller cities facing needs similar to ours. In closing, our legal department is committed to providing pro bono legal services to members of our community. But we can't move the needle alone. It is only by partnering with organizations like the Hamden County Legal Clinic and people like Ariel that we can mobilize the resources necessary to meaningfully bridge the access to justice gap. We're extremely grateful for the clinic's partnership. We look forward to working with you in the years to come. And we thank you again very much for this honor.